welcome back to my channel. This is Mihran from Mihran's Orbit. And uh, the French presidential election has been one of the most, uh, like, unpredictable elections for, like, the last few decades. Because when you look at all elections, they have been pretty one-sided, except for the American uh, election of 2020. Yeah, is, wasn't it in 2020? Yeah, it was. I'm forgetting things. So <laughs> It almost seems like that lockdown time never happened. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, uh, so the French presidential election, other than the American election, has been very, very unpredictable. We still have predict, uh, we still had like a decent chunk of evidence that Biden was gonna win, but here, yeah, in the first round it was like a mess. Uh, let me explain, and um, we are not gonna go to the absolute second round. We are gonna talk a little bit more about this. Uh, and what campaigning methods they use and what what they essentially do, right? Uh, uh, so basically, what, hap uh, what happened in the f first round was there are like, hold on, let me show you something. There's a far right, there's a, uh, there's a far right, there's a center, and there's a far left. Normally, like any other election, this is what happens. These two, like the far uh, center right and center left, uh, like fight off for the presidency. But what has happened here is that they just didn't pick up enough momentum, basically, if that makes sense. But what what actually happened is that, uh, like, or uh, what can I say? Like they, um, Mary Le Pen, first of all, um. Uh, she won like uh, she won like a lot because see in the far right there were three candidates i cannot remember their names properly but basically there were uh, three candidates now um, since mary le pen emmanuel macron and john luke macron were like the three uh, big like candidates in here um we got to get to the story how so there were three uh, possible winners uh, like uh, here in the far right spectrum so see the thing is is that the far right people had like these three people but mary le pen was just the right one that she was the most left one it seemed so she was like the least far right it's very complicated to put this but they were like the least far right this positioned herself herself into like uh, this area which meant that she was not far right anymore. She was looking like center right. So that's how they position it. And this, I think, is the reason why the center right got. I haven't put that much research into this. Like, I put, re like, this part I don't understand. Why didn't this just become a two by uh, two to like election? This could have been much easier. And see, the reason why. Uh, Mary Le Pen was is pretty uh, one is pretty simple, but uh, far left candidate pretty much had no competition. But uh, but but before we go there, they did have one competition, and you know what else is far left? Uh, 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 let me go for a second. Yeah, uh, I did some more research, and I found that technically socialists are far left. Okay, yeah, I didn't go there for research. I had all of this plan. But socialists are technically far left, which means when we were saying that Russia was autocratic, uh, zoom into Russia, zoom into Russia. Yeah, uh, when we are saying that, technically they were far left during the Soviet times. I mean, they are far left. They're autocratic, but uh, they're two different terms. We'll talk about terms later in the, uh, the video, maybe. But... See, socialists and, uh, why am I actually flipping this? Why do I think this way is right? Okay, I guess this way is right for you, but, uh, whatever. Uh, but the far left candidate here, uh, was Jean-Luc Macron. So he, uh, he had not that much competition because, um, 
uh, see the reason why is because he was like uh, i mean socialism is unpopular in left countries to be honest chinese socialism is good but like french france technically had a communist time have you guys seen the red revolution and the things uh, there, there was a whole different country for two months uh, that that was a very short time though, like in the Soviet times. Yeah, they they've never gotten uh, momentum again, and they've never won an election before. So the socialist party is out, and the far left is in. But see what uh, what happened in the uh, first round was that not only were all of these people coming, right? Not only were all of these people coming, but also uh, what happened was that. See, Jean-Luc Macron, we're going to talk about him here in the first round section, but since he said, uh, when uh, he was losing in the campaign, he said, don't vote for uh, Marie Le Pen or Le Pen, basically. And he said this four times. So this makes, uh, this makes a lot of sense that we are probably seeing a Macron victory. Not because everybody is going to vote for Macron, but because... Everybody has to be uh, voting for Macron. See, uh, see, the reason is they got to make Macron win. But Mary Le Pen gets to win. Uh, we are uh, still... Uh, yeah, we are still not lost. Uh, she's still not lost, but it's pretty uh, easy to understand why. See, if Jean-Luc uh, Macron had 20% of the votes... Then Mary Le Pen had 26, uh, 24% of the votes and Macron had 26%. That's a very bad graph to say it. But basically, if we say that, then uh, we can figure out if nobody votes, then nobody, uh, nobody lets Mary Le Pen win because then Macron's going to win because 28% is better than 24%, 26%. I don't remember percentages that well. But, you see, Marie Le Pen had a comeback on the first round. And uh, this is seen in this graph right here. Uh, zoom into the graph here. So this is Marie Le Pen, the middle graph. This is Jean-Luc Macron. This is Macron. So as you can see, a very strong start at the beginning. Like, like look at this. The amount they got quick. I mean, this is technically inaccurate. Check the graphs, actually. But basically, Macron had such a big lead on the beginning. That was mainly because he was the only uh, leader in, the, in Europe that had ties to Russia and had the strongest military. So Macron had a pretty good start there because Russia is good. And uh, Russia is uh, good for their election purposes. But another thing we got to talk about is Ukraine. You see... Macron's all other candidates except for John Luc Macron because Macron because they are like far left. I mean, you're never gonna support an autocratic country for far left. I mean, yeah, but but for the far right candidates, all of them uh, except for one, I think they don't. Uh, one of them doesn't have that much research put into it for some reason. But whatever, all of them were Ukraine supporting it some way, uh, Russia supporting it some way. Uh, so the most far, uh, like the most far right candidate, not Mary Le Pen, but another person, I forgot the names. Oh, I need to do more research. That, um, but basically he, uh, he was uh, like, what can I say? Said that he, want, uh, he wanted a French Putin, <laughs> which is uh, funny because all of them, and even uh, the National uh, Rally, I think, that's the party name of Mary Le Pen, uh, where, which party she comes from, took a debt or a loan from Russian banks who, from uh, like a very long time, and she never paid it back. So that is why the, the, like, the evidence was happening. But Russia-Ukraine is affecting this even more than you would think, because of the famine okay uh, uh, do a transitional clip i don't know how but do a transitional clip but um now uh, basically what happened is that 
a lot of parts of Africa and Arabia had like famines because they couldn't eat wheat. Like simply they couldn't eat bread and other things. Uh, they, for some reason. Like they couldn't because there wasn't enough. Russia said they would use it for the war effort or the special military operation. And Ukraine said they will use it for the war effort. Yeah, that makes sense. And all of the wheat fields, even they cannot grow it because there's mines on those wheat fields. To, uh, does Russia want famine? Okay. Uh, but, but basically, what this has caused is a bunch of European countries because they cannot cause uh, uh, grow their own wheat a very few amount they can they are going like the money prices for wheat is rising and rising because other places which have wheat left are gonna use it for more money because wheat is rare and rare equals to more money and more money equals to uh, well i don't uh, yeah more wheat which equals to more money uh, you get the uh, you get the cycle you get the cycle what I mean but uh, but basically what's happening is that their prices are going up. In fact, if we look at the inflation rate, this is even uh, high. See why does uh, Mary Le Pen go up for this part in the round first round? Well, here's why. Uh, see, five percent of France has inflation. Just as a comparison, six percent is in germany seven percent i think is in italy and ten percent is in uh is in spain and twelve percent is in the netherlands so the inflation rates are clearly increasing actually wait seven percent wasn't at italy it was at england or britain yeah yeah i i, I am not good at thinking about numbers <laughs> uh, but but basically that's what's happening and this is why, this is why, like, France has far left and far right. But, uh, like, these got, uh, this is the more important part. Le Pen won uh, for a short bit, like, got higher votes. Because as you can see, in this time, Le Pen crossed it for a seasonable chunk of the first round. Because she told... She would promise for lower taxes and Macron's policy of giving, a, like the, re, like what is that called, like the retirement, whatever. Basically, that payment which you get as uh, after retiring in sixty two to sixty five, and Le Pen actually lowering it to sixty, uh, if he be, if he became president, caused this massive. Uh, this was his spite. As well, she, uh, Macron couldn't contact Putin anymore. Meaning he stopped being this kind of hero for the French people that was about politics. And became a little bit more normal. <laughs> so Macron now doesn't have that in much of an advantage. But see, if you just look at the 2017 election, we can already say, yeah, Macron's going to win. Because see, remember why, uh, what I told you earlier? Yeah. If everyone do, uh, does split off between Macron and Le Pen, that'll be uh, good. But John Luc Macron, for some reason I just keep mixing up the names, uh, he he uh, has said that, and so it's, uh, he's like, what voters will be like more likely to vote Macron or nothing so, uh, rather than Le Pen. This means most a uh, sizable chunk of them will vote for uh, f vote for no one and uh, another size of a chunk for them will vote for macron but a small chunk of them will vote for le pen this also means that yeah macron wins even if a uh, macro even if there was no mary le pen votes and there was fully macron votes because it won't be possible for all of them to not vote not like vote for Mary Le Pen. Like most of them are not gonna vote for that. So, uh, so probably Macron's gonna win this, but it's still not up to. Uh, uh, it's still up to like hy hy hypothesis. For the last fifteen minutes, I talked about an analysis and took all of this uh, hypothesis and stuff about the French presidential election. But now, what I think, it, who is gonna win? 
my choice is Macron probably. And Macron will win at 58% and Mary Le Pen will win at uh, 44%. It's like, I, I don't know where I got that numbers from. It was definitely a random number, not in the internet everywhere. So bye bye everyone.